The growth of any society depends on the level of education of its citizens. The education sector in Brno has been devastated by over a decade long insurgency, thereby forcing thousands of children to be out of school. But the Zulum administration came in with a 10 packed development agenda, which revamping the education sector is part of it. Hello and welcome. This is Borno Restoration. I am Jesse Tafida. Today on the program, we will bring you up to speed on effort made by the Zulum administration to revamp the education sector. First, let's bring you the latest on Borno today. Work has commenced in earnest. It is the 113 kilometer Maiduguri Ring Road. And then to the Once completed, this project will relieve traffic in the city, deal with the housing shortage, create job opportunities, and promote economic growth. It's a brainchild of the current administration that covers Meduguri with about 113 kilometers of roads and uh, layouts. Uh, Your Excellency, this is as a result of fulfilling this administration's urban renewal drive that is supposed to enhance economic development, enhance security, solve the problem of housing deficit and a host of other that would help the living condition of the populace of Borno State. The state governor, Babagena Zulum, flags off the project. He wants the contractors to do a very good job that will stand the test of time. There is a need for us to decongest the city with a view to achieving this very important objective. Government of Borno has decided to now construct this green road so our economic situation improves. We shall not hesitate to expand the scope of the work to cover the entire 100 kilometers. The first phase of the road links Maiduguri Kano Road to Maiduguri Mongono Road via Maiduguri Gubio, covering about 16.5 kilometers. Compensation of over 1.6 billion naira was paid to 732 persons whose farmlands were affected due to the project. Nigeria's National Population Commission says an estimated 19 million Nigerians are living with disabilities. Research reveals that people living with disabilities are more likely to experience extreme poverty in Nigeria due to lack of inclusion. Out of this figure, the Northeast has the highest number of persons living with disabilities, especially met worse by years of insurgency. Today, stakeholders from various sectors in the state have agreed to establish a state-level disability inclusion advocacy committee. They call for an equal opportunity for people living with disability. Inclusion is now a global thing and uh, definitely every meaningful organization should be concerned and uh, foster inclusion, especially of persons living with disability. There is this need for us to all do diff things differently now, uh, ensure inclusion, ensure participation and ensure equal access for almost everybody. So this committee would sit down to look at uh, the loopholes, the areas that need actions as far as inclusion is concerned in Borno State. People with disability are engaged because from the Ministry of Youth and Social Development, you usually support them with 30,000 Naira monthly for more than, I can say, three or four years back. This move stakeholders believe will avail people living with disabilities opportunity to contribute their quota to the development of the society. People with disability also, they are vulnerable. Why are they vulnerable? Because most of them are downtrodden. Any person with disability must need benevolent service. And the benevolent service mostly is being rendered by those governmental and non-governmental organizations. People living with, uh, with disability, most especially here in Nigeria, are being considered as uh, vulnerable 
but with uh, implementation of such programs, people living with disability will be included in whatever the government trying to break into the society, which it gives them their full potential right. This project tends to strengthen inclusion and protection of women and girls living with disabilities within humanitarian response framework across Borno and Yobe states. The Borno State Governor, Baba Genazulum, has launched the first phase of a teacher training initiative with about 2,000 teachers found trainable after sitting for a competency test organized by the state government. This move, according to Professor Baba Genazulum, is geared towards improving the education sector. The event took place at Bew Local Council area of the state. Take a listen. One thousand nine hundred and forty nine teachers from across twenty seven local council areas of Bruno State. They are part of those who need further training as teachers following a competency test conducted by the state government. In spite of their test failure, Governor Baba Genazalum does not intend to fire them. He still wants them to be on board, but after they undergo additional training. It is with great pleasure and a profound sense of accomplishment that stand before you today at the commencement ceremony for the training of 1,949 teachers from 27 local government education authorities across the North State, taking place here at the College of Education Wakagi. This number that are to be trained here in Waterview form part of the 6,227 teachers that were considered trainable during the last competency test analysis. The students then and gentlemen in the recall, the next assessment carried out in 2021 which prompted the competency test for teachers across the different local government education authorities that took place from the 5th to 20th January 2022. The outcome of the test revealed that 5,257 individuals passed and they were since receiving the minimum wage. 6,227 were considered trainable and that is why we embark upon a training exercise to train those 6,227 that we are considered trainers. We have divided the figure into three. The first batch of about 2,000 of those trainable teachers will be trained here in Wakabi. Why? The second part also comprising of over 2,000 teachers shall be trained at the College of Education of Burma. The last batch of about 2,000 again will be trained inside the Sarkashian, former Sarkashian College of Education, Maiduguri, by the teachers Education Institute that is under the purview of the Bono State University. The aim of the government is to ensure that all these 6,227 trainable teachers shall be trained concurrently at these three different places. And they should be trained for, the, for a period of three months. At the end of the three months, they will undergo another competency test that will determine whether they are fit to teach in primary schools or not. If at the end of the training exercise, it was determined that all of you have passed 
the examination. Then we have no any problem. We shall include all of you to the number of qualified teachers that we already have in our master list. And if at the end of the training exercise none of you are passed the examination, all of you shall leave the academic sector. So I advise you to study very well, write the examination. We don't have any difference in failing any teacher. And we don't have any difference. We don't have the intention of retrenching any teacher. But what we want is that only qualified teachers can teach at our primary schools. And there's no going back. There is no going back. It may surprise you to know that during the last exercise, about 2,339 so called teachers were found to be unprelevant at all. Some are having NCs, and they cannot even write NCE. If I will not allow my child to be trained by somebody who is not qualified to, to teach, to train, then how would I allow the children of the masses to be trained by an unqualified teacher? But I believe the last competency test has shown that almost all of you that are here can be trained. And let's keep you done to work. So here is an opportunity for you to be trained here. And at the end of the three months exercise, you take your examinations, and once you pass the examination, the Ruth State Government is willing to implement the new minimum wage immediately in your appeal. Expanding this initiative during the inauguration of the local government vocation secretaries on March 19, 2024, government approved the allocation of one billion. For the training of 2,730 teachers, these teachers will undergo training at both the College of Education Worker and even Umar Ibn Ibrahim El Kanani College of Education, Science and Technology, Burma, for a three month sandwich program. For 1,884 teachers and a full time NCE program for 846 teachers that don't have the educational qualification to teach at the primary school. They have SSEs. Some are having SSEs for the last 20 years, and they are still teaching at the primary school level. This is not acceptable. But we have given opportunity to all those that are having SSE in the world state, that are working in the primary education as teachers, to come and to be trained here in Wakabi. Let me bring to your kind notice that all the 27 local government areas of Borno are represented here. What do we intend to do? We intend to promote peaceful coexistence amongst ourselves. Whether you are from Borno South or from Borno Central or from Borno North, the most important thing is that all of us are from Borno State. This issue of discrimination, this issue of disparity between ourselves within the same state will never be tolerated again. And what we are doing today is a deliberate attempt to enhance peace amongst ourselves. We are all the same. So, a canary girl in Mongolia of Ukawa will be trained here in this school. A Chibok teacher in Chibok will be trained in this school. That is what we want. When some of you that are here in view 
another effects of Southern Borno will also return in Bama, which is Borno Central, and some will go to Mutuba. And likewise, I want to direct the Ministry of Education and indeed the provost of this very important college to henceforth admit candidates from all over the state to this very important school. That was the practice that we had before. Our fathers and our senior brothers have school here, have school, have school here. Why not we? And government girls secondary school work up you, government girls secondary school view. Government girls secondary, government secondary school shop, amongst others, were chosen as our centers of excellence. That is why these schools were renovated and government will inshallah complete all the renovation exercises in these super two schools so that girls all over our state will come here for their secondary education. At least 30% of the admission of the government girls secondary school view will come from Northern Burma and Burma Central. Why those from you and Hong and other local government areas in Northern Southern Burma will also return within my Dubai and Northern Burma, like Mongono and others. And we shall even reintroduce payment of transport allowances for them to be returned back to home during their holidays. Commissioner for Education have to take note. The primary objective of this training initiative is to tackle long-standing issues surrounding remuneration, retention, and most importantly, the competency of teachers in accordance with national standards. Participants will receive this training free of charge, along with a monthly stipend of 30,000 naira, in addition to their regular salaries. All the trainees will receive thousand naira on a monthly basis. For the three months, and even those that will be trained for two years will receive an allowance scholarship of thirty thousand naira on a monthly basis. That means government will be spending three hundred million naira on a monthly basis for this training. So what we are given is more than what the commissioner has said also. But what I want is to see the teachers that are on the very own the local education authority in Borno State are well qualified to teach at our primary school. I urge of you to approach this opportunity with utmost seriousness, a successful completion of the program coupled with passing the competency test at its conclusion will lead to a much review, inshallah. Furthermore, the Ministry of Education is directed to release an additional sum of 50,000 naira to all participants <laughs> to ensure adequate preparation for the program. That means, in addition to the monthly 30,000 naira that will be given to the teachers, additional 15,000 naira will be given to all the 6,227 teachers for them to make necessary arrangements for their teachers. One billion naira has been released specifically for this initiative, and teachers enrolled in the program are tasked to take it serious. The problem facing basic education in our states escalated since the discontinuation of direct absorption of primary school teachers from their respective teachers' colleges. With no structured replacement, with no structured employment approach in place, the indiscriminate replacement of teachers has resulted in several challenges, including salary scale discrepancies and the hiring of unqualified persons, among others. The consequences of this practice were highlighted through the verification exercise conducted in 2019 and the competency test in 2022, the result of which are in the public domain. 
The situation has resulted in long-standing issues that have plunged education sector for over three decades of stemming policy neglect, questionable action from education administrators and politicians. This situation has further led the Borno state government to be grappling with challenges surrounding the recruitment, remuneration, and retention of teachers. Your Excellency, Your Highness, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I take this opportunity to address some significant emerging issues. One, concerns raised, concerns regarding salary disparity circulation on social media platform. As I earlier mentioned, the ongoing practice of indiscriminate teacher replacement at the LEA level has undermined conventional salary scales. This has led to certain local government areas issuing insufficient salary. The concerning trend has emerged where salaries of well-paid, experienced teachers who retire is divided into five or six apartments, which is subsequently sold. This illicit practice has left, uh, left these illegitimate appointed individuals with no record, no defined salary structure, or any mechanism to mon monitor work their work progression. Two, discrepancies in the salaries of the 3,000 newly employed teachers and the existing staff on minimum wage. The newly employed teachers underwent a formal application process including inter examination interview which culminated in an enhanced salary package of minimum of 52,000 naira per month for professional teachers. While the existing teachers were replaced through an informal process resulting in incomplete documentation and appointments not at the proper level, these deficiencies in record hampered promotion opportunities and other benefits. However, the Borno Subem is in the process of formulating recommendations to address these issues, which will be presented to Your Excellency in due course. Three, salaries of teachers serving in the Senior Secondary Education Board. Concerns have been raised regarding significant numbers of teachers in the Senior Secondary Education Board who are not receiving salaries. In response to this concern, the Ministry organized a meeting with the Biometric and Data Capture Office where I would like to disclose the following information. One, contrary to circulating information, a total of 796 sisters, uh, teachers have been consistently receiving their salaries. However, some of these teachers have chosen to claim non-payment and have abstained from their duty posts. We have distributed the list of these teachers to all principals and the Nigerian Union, uh, Nigerian Union of Teachers for no State Chapter. It is imperative to remind these teachers that their appointments are on probation and failure to take their work seriously may lead to termination. Within just one year, from May 2023 to the present date, you will soon witness the inauguration of a new mega school in Miringa a government day secondary school in Filinjirki, a mega Islamic school in Kwayapusar, a government day secondary school in Bilakutiki, a government day senior secondary school in Balbaya, a bilingual school in Perial, a government day secondary school in Kwayabura, complete rehabilitation and reintroduction in a boarding facility in government secondary school Skwagwa complete rehabilitation and restoration of boarding facilities in Government Girls Secondary School, Shafa, a new Government Day Secondary School in Kasi, a new Government Day Secondary School in Bargu, and the rehabilitation of over 20 primary schools in the Emirates. The Zulum administration has since inception promised to revamp the education sector, and this initiative is seen as a vital step towards improving the educational system. And that's our package on this episode of Borno Restoration. Many thanks for watching. I am Jesse Tofida. See you next time. Bye-bye.